So hello, Mike Robe Hunter here and uh, this is a slight follow-up uh, video to my previous video on sterilization. I got another question here that I would like to share with you, also an interesting one. Do you have any thoughts on tindalization for sterilizing the medium? I wanted to grow some bacteria, I think blue cheese or yogurt. Personally, I'm too young to die and I would like to avoid contamination. Thank you for the question. I think no one should be worried about dying because of contaminations, um, especially not when you're making yogurt or any uh, other food products using microorganisms. But I would like to talk a little bit about uh, tindalization first and then I'd like to give you some advice uh, on actually making homemade yogurt, uh, not only for eating, but also for microscopy. What is tindaliz tindalization? Well, Normally, when uh, one way of uh, sterilizing a growth medium or food, for example, also canned food, is, is to heat it up to a very high temperature. And uh, usually it's around 101, uh, 121 degrees centigrade for around 30 minutes. And uh, you do that using a pressure cooker or an autoclave. And the reason why you use a, uh, you, you need to heat it up to that temperature is, is because bacterial spores that might be present um, are killed at that temperature. For example, um, the spores of Clostridium botulinum um, are very pr problematic. Uh, they can cause uh, yeah, poisoning, food poisoning, a very severe form of food poisoning. And you have to really heat it up very high for a long enough time to kill off those spores because those spores are quite heat resistant. Now the problem with heating up food to that temperature is, is that the food loses actually some of the, the qualities. It doesn't taste uh, quite as rich anymore because of the high, the high temperature also destroys some of the molecules in food which are actually responsible for, for providing the taste. Um, and what I read is also sometimes maybe the nutritional value might not be quite as high. So high temperatures, while they're good for sterilizing, have the problem that the food deteriorates in quality. So what they've done, therefore done is, is you can use so-called tindalization. And in tindalization, you do not heat up the food quite as high, um, only to around 100 degrees centigrade, and then you allow it to cool. And uh, this will actually uh, also allow the bacterial spores, should they be present, to actually start to germinate and to grow. And when they start to grow, then they're not, uh, yeah, then they're temperature sensitive and can be killed again by the next heating process. And so basically, you have a couple of cycles of heating um, and, and cooling, and uh, this way the bacterial spores start to germinate and then you heat it again and then you're killing those bacteria because once they start germinating they're basically again temperature sensitive right um, so that's tindalization um, and now the next uh, question is is now what about when you want to make yogurt homemade yogurt well I tell you I've made a lot of many times already homemade yogurt and I've never used tindalization before um, if you make homemade yogurt what you do is you take of course milk and you heat it up you boil it the reason why you boil it is not only for killing the bacteria Bacteria, but you want to make sure that you really fully coagulate the milk proteins because this gives you a slightly more solid yogurt. I think the yogurt quality is simply better if you boil the milk. So usually what I do is, is I boil it very quickly for a couple of, of seconds. You got to be very careful that you don't overboil it. And then you allow it to cool. Usually you put a lid on top so that no dust and dirt can fall into the milk. You put a lid on top and you wait for some time until it cools down to around 45 degrees centigrade. You take a clean spoon, of course, some fresh yogurt and you mix in yeah, a spoonful of fresh yogurt into the warm milk and then you let it stand at a warm temperature um, for several hours, maybe around 8 to, to 10 hours maybe a little bit longer depending a little bit on the temperature and what will happen is is that those uh, yogurt bacteria um, will start to divide and to grow and they will convert the milk into yogurt and uh, the thing is the following those yogurt bacteria they grow so quickly that they will very quickly overgrow any possible contaminants so this is actually an interesting way of, of, of preserving food by using bacteria, in other words. Um, and uh, when you do that, uh, then you, you have uh, after, I don't know, let's say 10 hours, 12 hours maybe, uh, you have the finished yogurt that you can put into the refrigerator. And this yogurt is also very suitable for putting under the microscope because you have not mixed it yet. And therefore, you take a sample of this yogurt and directly put it on a microscope slide, then you are also able to see many of those yogurt bacteria that are still in chains. Uh, if you buy ready-made commercial yogurt, then very often it has been mixed, um, because otherwise the liquid and the yogurt will separate and 
that's why they mixed it uh, in but this also kind of destroys the nice uh, chain like uh, patterns of, um, of the bacteria so as a matter of fact homemade yogurt is quite suitable also for microscopy um, but don't mix it first right uh, about cheese i cannot really help you very much uh, other than uh, uh, saying that uh, of course you can uh, um, use uh, those uh, there are for people who make their own cheese you can actually buy uh, cultures um, yeah bacterial cultures and also fungal cultures that you can use to make cheese by the way also for yogurt you can also use for so-called freeze-dried bacteria that you can buy even over Amazon yeah um, and then you can mix that in into the milk directly so it is possible to to buy all of those um, bacteria also for for yeah homemade yogurt and cheese um, and uh, I'm quite sure that those uh, because they're commercially made they, these are then pure uh, bacterial cultures which should be free of contamination and if you make your own yogurt like this uh, then uh, what I've also heard is and I also would recommend that you uh, then not con endlessly continue to reculture the yogurt so what you do is, is you can do this a couple of times uh, that you simply take your made yogurt and then start the next yogurt culture with that you can do this a couple of times but you should not do this too often because if there are any contaminants then of course you also can continue to grow them that's why it's best sometimes to always take fresh yogurt uh, because this has been commercially made and uh, um, they're using uh, ready-made yogurt cultures uh, for, for that and uh, because the hygienic conditions of course may be much better than what we have in a kitchen at home um, and therefore you also reduce a little bit the possibility of then continuing to culture certain contaminations but making homemade yogurt is a very popular thing and and uh, if you stick to basic r rules uh, then then it shouldn't be any problem why i'm a little bit uh, suspicious is is always when people want uh, to make their own petri dishes um, and uh, culture medium um, to grow bacteria sometimes there you find on youtube um, and in the internet um, those uh, examples where you people take their own fingerprints for example on a culture medium on an agar plate to actually show how many bacteria growing on the skin i would not do things like this because these are actually bacteria which could be potentially pathogenic because they are uh, yeah growing on your skin right um so they are able to grow on humans and for this reason i would i would not do that and that's why i'm generally a little bit uh, cautious and i'm not so happy when people actually grow their own unknown bacteria but i think again if you stick to the basic uh, guidelines and rules it should not be an issue about making homemade yogurt okay because that is a, a very common thing that people do anyway and there are many um you know, online also many recipes um, um, available so i think uh, yeah I think I'm just going to call it quits uh, for right now. Um, I would like to again also invite you to subscribe not only to this channel but also to a newsletter that I would like to send out um, which uh, also summarizes a little bit all of the videos of the previous months uh, that I have uh, published and maybe some additional information as well. Happy microbe hunting as always. See you around next time. Bye bye.